What's up guys, Flame Victini here, and today I've got for you my OLT matches versus Tsung. Now, Tsung is bringing a very interesting looking team. He has Double Steel with Jirachi Kobalion, and then he has Titar and Lando T. Um, usually when you, I feel like usually when you see Titar and Lando T, you see a Rocker, um, Lando, T, a Rocker, um, Titar and a Scarf for Lando T, or some sort of offensive Lando T. But he also has Jirachi and Kobalion as potential stealth rockers, which is interesting. And then he has Latias Keld, which works pretty well with Titar, and mostly Titar. But I have brought an offense team that I actually used in the very first cycle of OLT the ladder. I've had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I actually built this team for BKC. He wanted me. He wanted a team with Gyarados, and then he mentioned the No Waterfall set with Crunch, Ice Fang, and Earthquake. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. So I built a team with it. I've got Scarf Healing Wish, Fire Punch Jirachi, Fire Punch for the Scizor. I've got Life Orb Share Force Kong. It actually does not have Mock Punch, but it still does pretty well against offense. If you can get it in on the right thing and just smash something. And Poison Jab is really nice to lure the Clefables, and then you really need Ice Punch and Thunder Punch. But um, I've got Sub CM uh, Raikou, which is actually pretty interesting and has worked pretty well for me. I've got an offensive Lum Chomp. Helps me a little bit with talent, I guess, and just status in general. And I've got a banded Azumarill. Azumarill is pretty interesting. Um, if you're worried about Shedinja, you can run Knockoff. Otherwise, Superpower is good to hit Ferrothorn because that can get really annoying if they have a very solid Conkeldur answer. Or you could use Facade if you're worried about Scald Burns, like Tsung has the Keldeo. And I actually don't quite remember which version I was bringing this game. But uh, looking at this team matchup, Conkeldur is very very good against this team. I can do a lot of damage with the Conkeldur. Um, Azumarill is also really good for my team and if I can set up with Gyarados that it, that itself is really good. Like in general Tsung's team doesn't have that much defensive synergy. Like even Garchomp can do a lot of damage to it. Jirachi is great for support and checking his faster mons. I don't think Raikou will be doing much this game other than checking Keldeo and maybe Rachi or a little bit of Cobalion depending on the sets, but it's not really going to be doing much to um, Titar or Latias or Lando T if it's Scarf. So yeah, this game, uh, I will warn you that I did kind of play this game a little bit in autopilot as well as my uh, other game as well, because I like when I was playing the series, I was having a pretty bad headache and I was I wanted to play at a different time, but there was no other time we could really play, so I decided to just play now. And because of that, I played a lot of autopilot in this game. So you're gonna have to keep that in mind. So I lead off with my Garchomp. This leads off with Jirachi. I figured that he would not expect me to go straight for the Earthquake, so I go straight for it and get the KO. And Tsung actually says that he thought this was Bulky Chomp because of uh, because of Scizor. But like, I feel like Bulky Chomp just loses a ton of momentum on this team, and I do have the Fire Punch lure and a little bit of Gyarados or I guess Call Mind Crew to help out with it. So he goes to his Latias right here, I'm just going to switch out to my Jirachi. And he actually reveals the Mega Latias, which I, I didn't realize. I wasn't sure if this was Mega Latias or if Titar was Mega or if he was just a no Mega team. But um, he's actually Mega Latias and I see Ice Beam. So this immediately makes me think that this is the Bolt Beam Thunder Wave Recover set. And I'm actually really glad glad he didn't go for the Thunder Wave right there. So I just U-turn out, and expecting him to go for a Thunder Wave right here, I switch out into my Raikou, kind of just to see what will happen also. But he And he does just go straight for the Thunder Wave. Now here I was thinking he might want to go into his Tyranitar, and I was also thinking that this Latias would have no way to hit the Conkeldur, thinking that it was Bolt Beam. So I go to my Conkeldur, he actually goes for the Psy Wave, and notice that Psy Wave is actually really weird, it's not even super effective. It does a set um, a set damage between 50 and 150 that's completely random. So he goes for the Psy Wave and does around 40% with both of the Psy Waves. I'm not sure how much uh, HP damage that was, but I'm able to take the, the Latias out with two uh, Ice Punches. He goes into his Keldeo right here and finishes me off with the Scald, which makes me a free switch into a Zoomerill. Now this is where I made a pretty bad play. I was predicting um, the Lando T here, so I went for the Waterfall, thinking that if he stayed in, I'm just going to get off damage on Keldeo anyway, which I need to weaken it for Gyarados to sweep. But I actually, he actually gets a crit that turn, and I'm really, really glad he did not get a burn on either of those turns. I think I should have just gone straight for the play rough, even if he went to his Lando T. Um, I was like, I was at the time I was thinking maybe it was defensive Lando T, but like. 
even if it was defensive land OT, I can just switch out and do some damage. I can get up rocks with my guard chomp, and it really was was not worthwhile staying in and waterfalling if in case uh, Tsung decided to go for the scald or try to catch me over predicting. So I I want to save my Azumarill because I can healing wish that up later, and that'll be really important. So I go into my Raikou, and Raikou is not that important. Uh, he doesn't get a Scald Burn there either, but I don't think on this turn a Scald Burn a Scald Burn was important at all. Now the reason I don't go for um. I go for the Thunderbolt, and you'd think that's kind of odd. I probably could have gone for the HP Ice, but I was expecting... Um, Tsung definitely didn't go to um, Tyranitar because he was expecting Calm Mind Volt Switch. I think he was expecting me to be Calm Mind Volt Switch, so he wouldn't want me to Volt Switch out on the Tyranitar. And HP Ice, if I remember correctly, I did, ran, I did run a Calc for HP Ice on the Keldeo, and it did not kill. Or it was not a guaranteed kill, at least, so I wasn't... I think it wasn't a kill at all, so I wasn't I wasn't really wanted to go for the HP Ice, so I just went for the Thunderbolt as he went into his Lando T, and he goes he goes for the U turn, um, which makes sense. I probably should have Thunderbolted right here to do a little more damage since U turn was pretty darn obvious, but I was on autopilot. I just clicked HP Ice, especially in case it wasn't Scarf, I guess. So here I bring in my Guard Jump on the Tyranitar. And I go straight for the Earthquake, as we see that the Tyranitar is defensive, and he's able to get up his Stealth Rocks here. Now, I decide I want to get up my own Stealth Rocks before he switches out, but it might have been worthwhile to actually just finish off this Tyranitar, because um, keeping my Guard Jump healthy would have been helpful, because to help me just tank some random hit. And also, that would have meant that when he comes in, like when he brings in his Keldeo right here, the Sand is going to end this turn. So the Keldeo actually stays alive, which is pretty annoying. If the Sand wasn't there, then I mean he wouldn't take Stealth Rocks damage, but then my gear, but then my Garchomp would have more HP, so it could potentially tank a weaker a weaker hit. So here I decide to go for go to my Gyarados and go for the Dragon Dance. Um, the end game play is something you really have to think about whether it was worthwhile risking the burn on the Gyarados right here. So uh, I could not have gone Azumarill on the Keldeo. So the only option other than going Gyarados was to go Jirachi. So let's see if I went Jirachi, I would have been able to U-turn. Now he could have, um, depending on what Tsung wanted to do, he could have U-turned into his Lando T, and then that makes me bring in my Gyarados. And then I wasn't sure if I'm right there. I wanted to try to get plus two, because um, I wasn't sure, of, like I felt the Krabalion might be a little bit bulky, and also if he gets off Intimidate, he would probably be able to live a hit, even though I'm Earthquake. And um, I, also, I was also just trying to get an opportunity to Healing Wish my Azumarill, and if the other, the most annoying thing was that I didn't want to um, U-turn as Tsung went into his Cobalion, and then his Cobalion had Volt Switch. Like I was, I was like, in case it was like a bulky pivot Cobalion, I really did not want to go to Jirachi, U-turn on the Keldeo as Cobalion comes in, and then find I get bopped by a Volt Switch from the um, from the Cobalion yeah, as I go to Gyarados or something of those sorts. So I decided to go for Gyarados, and um, the reason I go for the second Dragon Dance here is because I wanted to be able to outspeed the Lando. Because um, the Lando can Stone Edge and Earthquake the rest of my team. And for Azumarill to really do work, I need to be able to switch around and have some sacks so I'm not always locked into one move. Because I need to be able to utilize um, Waterfall and Aqua Jet at this point. So I decided to go for the second Dragon Dance. And he does not get the burn. So this means I'm able to just finish it off. I don't go for the Waterfall there because I don't have it. If I had it, I definitely would have gone for it. And again, right here, if I had the Waterfall, I would have gone for it, but I don't have the Waterfall, so I just Mega Evolve here and go for the Ice Fang and take out that Lando T. And now as Cobalion comes out, I'm just going to go straight for the Earthquake. As uh, it actually survives, which really, really surprised me. I thought the game was done at this point. And he goes for the Iron Head to take out my Gyarados. Now he does activate the Salak Berry, which is really interesting. He could not have gone for the SD there, however, because I did have the plus two. So it turned out that that second Dragon Dance was really important. So he actually goes for the Iron Head right here because that's the only way he can win is if he flinches me. But he does not get the flinch, so I'm able to Healing Wish up my Azumarill to Aqua Jet this Cobalion and finish this game. So I think um, I think the biggest misplay in this game was me waterfalling the Keldeo when I should have just clicked should have just clicked Play Rough. Um, if I just clicked Play Rough, it would have been really simple and I wouldn't have to worry about the end game. I wouldn't have to worry about Scald Burns as much. But um, thankfully, Tsung is doesn't really get that much hot water. <laughs> so I'm able to take game one, and I'll be right back with game two. All right, guys, I'm back with game two. Now I have brought my RMT 
One of the reasons I brought my RMT is because I thought Sableye did pretty well against the Sun's general style, and another reason is because I am extremely, extremely comfortable with this team, so even if I'm on autopilot, I feel like I can play this team pretty darn well, just because of how comfortable I am with it. Now, Tsung actually brought the team that he used versus lefties for Smogon Tour, so that's Sub Salak, um, SD Guard Trump, Life Orb Starmie, Offensive Pinsir, obviously, um, Ferrothorn, uh, I think Scarf Magnazone, and I'm not sure on the, I think it's Curse Gastrodon. I'm pretty, because I, I know when I was preparing for lefties, I suggested Curse Gastrodon, and I think Tsung and PDC later built this team before they played uh, lefties. But um, looking at the team matchup, Sableye indeed does have a very good matchup, but he has Pinsir Magnazone, which is really scary. If I let uh, Skarmory get trapped very early, then Pinsir can just come in and start blowing holes through my team, and if Sableye gets in quick attack range, then I'm completely done for. And I also have to be careful about the Lando T, since it would uh, kind of prompt me into my Skarmory, which could give him more chances to bring in his Magnazone. And the other thing is I also want to be careful not to give his Pinsir free opportunities to try to force me into Skarmory so he can trap it with Magnazone early. I want to delay how far he can trap me as much so to limit the offensive pressure he can put against me with his Lando T and his Pinsir. Now he also has Starmie, which is a pretty big threat. Uh, Superior can tank one Ice Beam, so I'm going to use that. And if Sableye is healthy, I can also take it on. And uh, if it's Psyshock, it's biggest problem because it can hit Tentacruel much harder. But if it's Thunderbolt, then I can stall a little more life orb damage. And I do have a game plan to take on the Starmie later on, which will be really important. So, I lead off with my Sableye, seeing how good of a matchup it has versus Tsung, and he lives off with his Gastrodon. I just go for the will o -Wisp to burn this and whittle it down as he goes for the Scald. One thing you should know about my Sableye is about my Sableye's luck factor. It very rarely gets burned by Scald, very rarely gets paralyzed by Discharge even, but Tornadus' Life Orbs, Tornadus' Life Orb Hurricanes are like 100% accurate, 50% confusion rate, 75% chance to hit myself, I swear. But this Sableye is extremely good at avoiding burns, so I'm able to knock this off. I get a crit there, which helps me wear this down a little more, and burn this without getting burned myself. Now here I go to my Superior. Now unfortunately, um, I was thinking this was the version with HP Fire Superior and Taunt, the one that I brought versus Tesso, but this is actually the original version with HP Ground and Synthesis, uh, sorry, Substitute, with HP Ground and Substitute, which means Pinsir is kind of free fodder to come in. So I was really worried about Pinsir coming on Superior, because Superior can't touch Pinsir at all. Now I think Tsung, knowing that I brought HP Fire earlier, was a, maybe was a little worried that this was HP Fire rather than HP Ground. Now I do double back into Sableye, worrying about that Pinsir, but not wanting to go to my Magnezone to take it on, as he actually goes to his Ferrothorn. And the Ferrothorn kind of indicates to me that he does not expect him to be HP Fire. So I think perhaps if Lefties, uh, uh, sorry, if Tsung went to his uh, Pinsir, he would have been able to put more offensive pressure. I can understand not wanting to take damage with the Pinsir, and also the fact that my Skarmory has Rocky Helmet, but that way you get off your Mega, or, uh, well, it's not necessarily better to get off your Mega earlier, because there's nothing extremely fast on my team that you would outspeed anyway, so that's not important. But what is important is that you prompt in my Skarmory much earlier, which means you can try to trap it with Magnazone much earlier, which means you can put much more pressure with Lando T and Pinsir later on in the game. So yeah, he goes into his Gastron. As I go for the taunt, either not stop wanting to stop the Ferrothorn from getting up hazards, or to taunt the Gastron as it came, come in, comes in, rather than going for a useless whip. So I don't feel like switching out here to the Superior because of that pincer is such a looming threat, and I also don't want Ferrothorn to get up hazards. So I go for the knockoff and stay in, and he here he switches out into his Magnazone on my knockoff. I'm not quite sure why, but I understand right here that he wants to go for the Volt Switch and get off damage. Because my recover will be faster than the Volt Switch, he's guaranteed to get off damage against my Sableye. So, and then bring in his uh, Starmie, which is the problem, because he knows my Sableye can tank uh, one Hydro Pump when it's um, very healthy. So that was a very nice play by Tsung to go for the Volt Switch right there. I do lack a ground type, which sucks. So I go into my Tentacruel, kind of just to see what the set is, and he goes for the Thunderbolt as I go for the Toxic Spikes. Let me explain this play. This play was really important, I think. Um, so there was no real reason for me to go for Scald other than to hope that I got a burn on the Starmie. Without really getting a burn on the Starmie, um, that Scald really isn't going to do much other than reducing one life orb hit. 
Now the toxic spikes actually does two things that are very important. The first thing that it does is if Sarmi is forced out without rapid spinning, and um, that means that when it comes back in, it'll be hit by those toxic spikes. Which means that every turn it goes, it, every turn it stays in, it's gonna lose 12% guaranteed, and every time it uses an attack, it's gonna take a life orb damage. Which means it's gonna be worn down more than twice as fast as it normally would, and that makes life orb stalling the Starmie much more possible than like than stalling the Starmie would be if it only had the life orb recoil, because that would be very very hard for me to stall out. And um, the other thing it does is that it does hit Pinsir. Now that's the only other tar target that it actually hits. And you may think that it's bad that I'm hitting the Pinsir because I'd want to burn it. But it does have some benefits. You did see that there's always a way for Tsung to kind of force my Sableye to take damage or get momentum with his Magnezone. By bringing in his Magnezone on my Sableye and the fact that my recover outspeeds his Volt Switch, will mean that he can Volt Switch and bring in his Pinsir if I decide to stay in and recover or something. And it means that if I switch out to something, most of my, my likely targets to switch out to are also weak to Pinsir. So th that's kind of like, the poison is a way to wear down the Pinsir, making the Pinsir more stallable, and also, especially if I get Rocky to helmet damage off with my Skarmory. So that really helps, I think, even though you may think, oh, it'll be hard to stall out that Pinsir, at least it gives me an option, especially if it can get up Stealth Rocks and it can get Rocky Helmet damage, it'll be much more possible to stall out that Pinsir. So, the Toxic, but the main reason for the Toxic Spikes was to hit the Starmie if it comes back in. So yeah, here I just sack my Tentacruel to the second Thunderbolt, Starmie takes one extra life for a hit, which is pretty good, and um, I'm able to go to Superior right here. I think I was pretty confident Tsung was aware that Ice Beam would not kill me, so I decide to double out here into Heatran, expecting that Ferrothorn to come back in, and this gives me an opportunity to either force in the Starmie early, and kind of make us take more damage and get out my rocks as well. So he actually goes to his Gastron as I go to my rock, as I get out my rocks, and it's pretty obvious he's gonna bring back in his Starmie right here. And he takes that rock damage and he is now poisoned, which means the next turn he's going to take around 22% for no matter what he does. So here he goes for the Hydro Pump on my, um, what, was, what was my Heatran? As I bring in my Altaria, I I'm not expecting Altaria to do much in this matchup at all. Now here, I make a potentially questionable play by doubling to my Heatran. Um, I wasn't necessarily predicting Ferrothorn, although I would have liked to predict Ferrothorn. I just wasn't sure whether he would stay in a Rapid Spin. And if he did stay in a Rapid Spin, I did not want to kill the Starmie with my Altaria. I felt if I killed the Starmie with Altaria, I would lose a little bit of momentum that I did not really want. Now here, it may seem like I'm throwing my Heatran away just like that, but I go for the Rocks right here because I because if he stays in the Hydro Pump, I'll definitely tank that hit, and that means I'll get up those Rocks for sure. And Really the only thing Heatran is doing this game is taking on that Ferrothorn. And for Ferrothorn, I'm thinking that I can utilize Sableye uh, to kind of actually beat it and Skarmory to kind of stall it. Potentially, depending on the Magnezone situation, but mostly I'm be thinking that if I can get up those rocks and then have the Starmie go down, then I'm thinking, Ferroth um, I'm thinking that Sableye can kind of just win the game, which is where I'm trying to go. So he actually goes to his Lando T on the Stealth Rocks. Now right here, is a really interesting play. He doubles out into his Fair Thorn, expecting either my Skarmory or um, I guess they would have to be expecting my Skarmory. And rather than trapping it immediately, he wanted to get up hazards to wear down my team. The reason I go for Lava Plume, obviously it accounts for him doubling to Magnezone on my Skarmory. It definitely accounts for that. The other thing it accounts for is him trying to go for a Swords Dance or him trying to go for a Substitute. I get off a bit of damage on that and I ensure that I don't switch into my Skarmory on a Substitute and then like, ha and then like whirlwind the whirlwind the Lando T out into Magnezone as he goes for the Stone Edge or anything like that. Like I was wanting to get off damage in a way that I can kill it with Superior, or um or burn it basically. I just wanted to stop it stop it from getting any free setup. And if he just went f if he just killed my Heatran right there, I would have just gone to Sableye and just clicked Will O Wisp. That way, if he if he goes to Starmie, it'll hit rocks and poison and die. If he switches to anything else or stays in, it'll get burned. And Sableye is just gonna be doing a ton of work from that point on, just burning everything. And I was pretty confident in Sableye's ability to just win the game from there. So I he does actually double and I get that lava plume off, which is really really nice for me it makes me a little less reliant on Sableye 
to take down the rest of his team and it opens up a door for Altaria to put in a lot of lot more work. So I go to my Sableye here on the Lando T as he goes for the Earthquake and is not able to kill me because I do hit that Will-O-Wisp. Now right here, Swords Dance was extremely obvious, but it's definitely not worthwhile for me to go for the Taunt as he decides to randomly EQ. So he does go for the Swords Dance right here. Now here I don't go into my Skarmory because um, I was thinking that I... I was thinking, one, if he doubles to Magnazone, obviously I don't want to lose Skarmory. Two, if I go to Altaria, I'll, he's probably going to go for the Earthquake if he stays in. So I can stall out that way. And also I can bring in Superior to revenge the Lando T. And that'll put some more pressure on him without bringing in my Skarmory quite just yet. So he actually goes to his Magnazone, predicting my Skarmory as I go into my Altaria. To, com to combat the Lando T, I guess. Uh, kind of like a sack. Now here, I don't go for the Mega Evolution in case he chooses to stay in and Flash Cannon. Now here, I don't go for the Roost because I figured that'd be pretty passive and I can just go for the Dragon Dance and kind of take this game from here. Now, I did run a Calc on this and unless his Pinsir was adamant, he had zero chance to kill me right there. And if even if he was adamant, it was only a small chance to kill me. So I was able to um, take that Quick Attack and go for the Return to finish off the Pinsir. He did have his Magna Zone left to um, beat this Altaria since I don't have Earthquake, but at this point, Superior can just HP ground that Magnazone, Leaf Storm everything else, and Sableye also just wins. Like, there's, there's no way for Jisung to win at this point, so he just forfeits, and I am able to take this game 2-0, um, which is pretty, I was pretty excited that I was able to win, despite really not being in my best, despite, despite not being, really being in the best mental state, because of my headache, I was having trouble thinking all of my plays through and I was playing pretty much on autopilot like I would on ladder or something like that but yeah I'm able to take this series and I think it was pretty good and I hope you guys enjoyed see you guys later